Hey. What's up, guys? <laughs> I was like the Happy most melodramatic way to start. <laughs> um, or or non-drama. Yeah, melodramatic exactly, is over drama. Exactly. Non-drama. Lack of drama way to start. Well, it is our Thursday. We are getting things on board and set up before we get started right at noon. So you guys can do me a favor. We'll go ahead and get started on the Facebook one as well. My head is okay. cut off. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, what's up? Uh, we're gonna pull this over a little closer. So Holly and I are not the same height, <laughs> so it makes things difficult when we start to do these things. Oh wait, hold on. Um, here, I think we have to start this way. There we go. Anyway, if you guys are on, what's up guys? How's it going? Aiden and Holly here. We are simultaneously broadcasting on YouTube and on Facebook. We usually how this thing goes. I am gonna make sure that we are muted. If you guys are on board and you're hanging out, um, give us a little shout out. We are just getting started. Hey, what's up, Mark? How you doing? Beautiful. Beautiful. Excellent. Oh, yeah, I wanted to pull up our T-shirts so people see you there. What's up, Kevin? How you doing? I'm First to so like, Tiana, hello from North Carolina. I like that. Yeah, I love that too. I like that. That's cool. Um, you guys don't know this, but Holly is actually standing on a book right now because we're trying to <laughs> level off her height. And I might actually find another book for her to stand on. We won't talk about what book she's standing on. Um, but uh, that's just trying to help things out there. What's up, Kevin? How you doing? Hey, guys, I just want to make sure you can hear us okay. It sounds like you can. Um, Christina from Facebook. Hello, Christina. How you doing? That's my little Facebook wave over here. <laughs> <laughs> getting things going here. Um, man, we're going to be talking about how to do uh, long runs. We're going to be talking about um, some of the things that we like to drink, including Scratch Labs. Uh, let's see here. Trail Seeker, hi from Cypress. Running Geek Girl, hey from Arkansas. What's going on? Okay, Marcel, hello from Germany. What's up, Marcel? Agius is hi from England. We can hear you nicely. Excellent. Maybe you should just stand on your knees. <laughs> it's not a bad yeah. idea. That would be really low. Be I don't really think bad. I could make it down that far. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see here. Uh, Kevin, um, Taxo, we can hear you all great. Perfect. Awesome. Hope you guys are doing well. Hey, if anyone out there is in the Houston, Texas area, we are thinking about you guys. We are thinking dry thoughts. We know how rough it is out there. So you guys are staying strong, hopefully. Hopefully you're not having to uh, swim your way out of any trouble as we sort of go here. There we go. Um, I, Tiana, I know the short struggle, <laughs> five feet. It's rough. Olzinski, Sid and Selmo for life. It's Olzinski. <laughs> Guys, Olzinski is like my uh, trail runner partner and uh, mountain bike and beer buddy. So I'm glad to see him on there. What's up, Mike? Will Meredith, hi again, uh, guys from Buxton, Derbyshire, UK. I love that we have such a worldwide I crowd. Know, it's very global. It is global very global. Show. It is very much. Um, just am I ever going to win something here, guys? <laughs> well, you got to enter that stuff. I know today might be your lucky day. We're giving away some wonderful Scratch Labs, and these are the things that we're going to be sending out to you guys. Lucky you. Should be pretty good. Um, Taxo says, I'm in Louisiana, but didn't go as bad as expected. That is good to hear. We always like that. Very cool. Uh, the, we the got Deanna says, hi from Houston, Texas. The sun is finally awesome. out. That is so good to hear. What's up, Jennifer? I see you tuning in via uh, Facebook. Christina Cook says, hello. Yeah, whether you guys are listening on Facebook or on YouTube, uh, we're just getting things started here as uh, we like to go. Angela says mine. Mm -hmm. uh, Kathleen, Canberra, Australia. I love that. That's so cool. Whew. Amanda, hello. How you doing? 
Man. One more minute, guys, till we get officially started. If you want to uh, already jump in that Scratch Labs giveaway, you can click that Glean link right down in the description, and uh, it'll show you how to enter and how to even get multiple entries. There's actually a way of increasing your chances of uh, getting multiple spots, increasing your odds. We'll be doing that drawing in about an hour or so. Of course, we're here to always answer your questions and everything else. Um, Holly, what are you doing this weekend? I am going to LA this weekend mm. for Labor Day. Just, just get outside, get mm. in the sun. Although it's going to be like 85 here. It's right going to be really warm. Yeah. I'm going to be barbecuing some ribs over the weekend. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Good Labor Day. It's going to be hot. Yeah. Oh, yeah. By you, it's going to be. Yeah, it's going to be 95. Because like it is hot here in California this week. Uh, I was just in Yosemite last weekend, trout fishing with my younger brother, which was kind of cool. I caught my first trout. It was you like this big. I know. It's, it's actually really funny. Maybe I can pull it up. Oh, alas, it's on my it phone. Like I don't know. It's, it was, it's a technological it was not huge. Too far. <laughs> it wasn't big. No, 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 it wasn't big. And uh, then I drove through the valley in California, and it was 111 degrees. It's what oh registered my, my car. Yeah. It's pretty, pretty gnarly. Yeah, I feel that's very hot. Totally. Dominic says, greetings from Poland. Oh, Jeff's on there. Just grow runners can eat ribs. That sounds hopeful. Heck yeah, that's what we do all this running for, right? I am a huge barbecue fan. Um, eight month old. Oh, what's up? Eight eight month old <laughs> little baby running geek girl. I'm so cool. Uh, let's I know right. Uh, Kathleen, what is it? Three fifty nine a.m. There. What? Yeah, you guys are hi from India. Oh my goodness, you guys are amazing. How do you once again Sao Paulo, Brazil? What's up? Awesome. Oh, you guys are amazing. Well, it is noon, guys. We are going to officially kick this thing off. Uh, we are going to talk about today's giveaway as well as the main topic at hand, which is going to be our long runs. What's up, Troy? How you doing? Running Guru, how are you? You guys are always in here. I love it. Um, um, it is Running Guru. Nice coincidence there from the blog you just posted. So we are going to do things this way. We have a link in our description of the YouTube video and also on Facebook where um, you can enter our giveaway for our Scratch Labs. Shazam right here. This is really good stuff. Have you ever used this stuff? Yeah, I have. Yeah. It's, it's awesome. It's I, really popular. It's really popular. I really like it too. The, the story with these guys is kind of cool. They it was started by a, a guy named Alan Lim who works a lot with pro tour cycling teams and when they were pushing so hard for like the Tour de France and these like multiple 20 plus day events, they were trying to find the optimal hydration source. And what they found was they were, they were creating things that didn't quite go in line with what the teams were actually sponsored by. And so they actually called something the secret drink mix. Oh God. And so everyone would have their water bottle that would say Power Bar or Gatorade on the outside, but secretly oh. they would be drinking this That's inside. Awesome. So this is the secret drink mix that these guys found was just the best for hydration, maximal absorption of fluid, minimal problems with your gut and small intestine, um, not too much sugar or anything else in there too. And uh, it's great. So we're giving away two packets for you guys who are running and you know really need and care about the hydration. It is a great product. So you can enter the giveaway by going to Gleam Link. One of the ways you can enter is actually by going to visit and check out the Scratch site. So we got a few things going there. Mm. Um, oh, you guys are great. Mm -hmm. Trinidad and Tobago, amazing. Um, look at all this stuff. Yeah. So that's how you enter in there. Um, Hey, Jeff Loop, our, our video <laughs> editor is is watching us <laughs> while he's editing some of our videos, uh, which is always, always, uh, good. <laughs> always good. Jeff, you keep working. You, you work so hard. <laughs> you work so hard. We Guys, we put out so many videos, and this guy does such a great job. So yeah. if you really like the edits of our videos and the different little details we go in, that's really Jeff just going to town, and we are just so pleased with that stuff. Um, so anyway, uh, per usual, guys, we will be taking your questions for today as you go through anything you guys want to talk about or ask, but I thought we would talk about long runs and how to improve our long runs uh, specifically. So if you guys have any questions on that, that is uh, what we're going to be going after, things you struggle with your long runs, 
whether it's a speed thing, whether it is something else, we can always go after it there. Uh, Troy says, bravo, Jeff. Uh, Lee says, hey, I'm watching with laptop on the floor <laughs> while I'm on my foam Dedication. roller. <laughs> Lee also works with the Run Experience guys. She is dedicated. Very if you dedicated. email us. You're talking to Lee. Most you're, you're pretty much talking to Lee. She, she runs this place so uh, and keeps us in line. So right on, Lee. Thanks for being there. Um, let's see here. So we are both getting ready for some longer races. Yeah. Yeah, and and what are you doing, Holly? So you're doing the North Face 50K because mm -hmm. I'm I'm getting ready for that too. Yep. And then you are also doing this like kind of crazy trail festival in October. Yeah. Do you want to talk about that a little? Yeah, I'm doing this um, three day trail running festival in Bryce, Zion, and Grand Canyons. Mm -hmm. So you basically you run 44 miles over the three days. Um, 44 miles in three days. Yeah. Most people have trouble running that in like yeah. two weeks. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's gonna be an experience. Um, but you come back to this like main trail camp in between each run, and it's really cool. There's like yoga and like massage tables and live music and all this stuff. And your your only focus for three days is just running and and hanging out. So it should be awesome. It's in the beginning of October. That's cool. So yeah. not only will that be good training for obviously the North is fifty k. You're just gonna be machine after that. But uh, how do you train for something like that? Right when you're doing multiple, yeah, you know, long runs back to back. I've been playing with um, running like maybe multiple times a day or doing like mm -hmm. a speed, small speed workout in the morning and then doing something longer, just more time on the legs back yeah. to back or instead of giving rest days between running a few days back to back, just getting used to like not feeling great every single time. Yeah. The altitude is one thing that's going to be like out here we can't really mimic it. So yeah, that'll just be a nice surprise. What's the, what's the altitude? Um, it's starting at like 8,000 will be one of them. Man. That's like the first day. Yeah. <laughs> and then it's around six and seven. So I was uh, up in Yosemite in Mammoth and we were camping at 7,000, 7,500 feet and hiking up to 9,500 feet. And that was, oh yeah, that was a thing. That's, yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. That was really hard. You feel it. You feel it for sure. Yeah, you definitely feel it. Uh, you know, one of the things that I have been working on myself, and guys, this is a great way. I've gotten some, already gotten some good questions. Running Guru says optimum steady pace for a long run. Well, actually, let's talk about that a little bit. You know, especially if you guys are getting ready for a half or a full marathon um, and you're targeting a pace, say, for your race, and let's say it's a nine-minute mile, mm -hmm. right? Um, that's like your race pace. The tendency is to do all of your long runs at that at nine that minute pace. mile the whole time. It's not reality. <laughs> it's, it's not reality. And it's not to say that we don't want to spend some time there because it is really, really important to to build that. But if we do too much of it, especially far away from a race, it can really, break really you beat down. you up and oh, break yeah. you down. Mm -hmm. yeah. So how do you pace your your runs? And granted, I know you're doing it on trails and other things like that, yeah. but in terms of like what you think your target race pace is versus for me, I'm, I used to kind of go by feeling like, oh, I'm feeling this way today, so I'm going to push it, or I'm feeling crappy today, so I'm going to not. Um, I don't think that's a good way to go either. It's like you are you don't know how you're going to feel on race day anyway. So for me, I like to kind of break up the run in sections. So, you know, use the beginning couple miles to kind of get into it, but kind of push yourself towards the middle where you're feeling okay. I know you've always said like halfway through, if you feel good, yeah. push it on the way back. Yeah. I think that's a great rule of thumb. Like, um, doing that in the beginning kind of sets you up for potential failure down the road, but um, that halfway point is a good, good yeah. time to kind of kick it up a little bit. Yeah, so it, there's a nice way to start mentally breaking down both the race and also your training where the, the first, no one is winning their long run uh, or their race in the first you know, quarter to half of it. And if anything, it's, it's teaching yourself how to be patient and how to, to be a little bit slower than you think. So if you're going after that, nine minute race pace, you might be spending time closer to a 10 minute mile pace yeah. in the beginning, yeah. you know, go slow and then building up and spending some time at nine minute mm -hmm. at the end. Um, you know, and this is, this is, um, running guru's question in terms of like optimum steady pace for a long run, you know, as you get closer to your race and if you're starting to focus more on race pace work, well, then it's really important to actually spend time at that part of the race. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And you could start thinking about like, okay, I'm going to spend the final 10 to 15 percent of my run, yeah. and then build up maybe to 25 or 30 percent. And if you wanted a real big day, you could do 50 percent, or go and do another race, and then yeah. you're getting the 100 yeah. percent. But notice that when you do that race, 
you you need like a couple days hard recovery afterwards yeah. because it's so hard. What's nice that doing it at the end of your run too is you're already tired or pretty tired. So doing that race pace at that point will prepare you for like race day and, and holding on to that pace when you're at the end of it. Yeah. You know, the other thing that I like, I'm I'm starting to do this more this fall, and this is just getting used to that uh that stamina that's required, mm -hmm. especially when you're tired, is to do back to back kind of medium ish longish yeah. runs. Yeah. So if I'm getting ready to run, you know, two to three hours on the trails, because this is going to be different if you're on the pavement. You know, let's say in the pavement you're getting ready to run either a 10 mile run or let's say a 15 to 20 mile run. What you could do is a run the day before that is, you know, 50% to two thirds the distance of that. Mm -hmm. So if you're getting ready for a you know 20 mile run on a Saturday, you know you could be working on a 10 mile run, you know nine to 10 mile run the day before, Friday, yeah. and you're going in on on some tired legs, and you can kind of build and ratchet those up. So I'm going to be using that strategy. So I've got two back to back runs. I think tomorrow I'm going to be probably running seven or eight miles on the trails, and then what I'm going to go after on Saturday. I got to get up there early because it's going to be hot. Oh yeah, hot out yeah. here. It's going to be uh, probably thirteen to fourteen miles, oh, awesome. something like that. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, the 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 back to back days are good, and, and the amount of mobility I need to do in between <laughs> to get myself when, yeah. ready for those runs. And you, you're going to be tired, but that's oh that's man, I'm going to be smoked. Um, that's so funny. Yeah. So let's see here. Uh, Tiana asks, any workouts to help you maintain your own stride without overstriding, or do you just run more? I think this is kind of like a cadence question. Yeah, actually, we have a really good video Nate did that helped me a lot. Um, actually, he did part of it on your bike. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He was comparing your stride to, to gears and going up, down, and flat. And it's like it helped me a lot. Basically, um, your stride is supposed to change as the terrain does. And so kind of viewing it that way. So you said your longest stride should probably happen on your downhills. Yep. Um, flat would be a little bit in from that. And then going uphill, you're supposed to kind of shorten that to get right under your hips. But I think that it should always be fluctuating. You should be adjusting it. You know, there shouldn't just be one mode. Yeah, it's, it's you know, sometimes when you think about stride, what we're really asking is a cadence or turnover, how fast that is. And you know, regardless of uphill, flat, and downhill, we, we want that in a range. Usually for most people, it's going to be in that like 85 to 95 steps per minute on one leg, right? Mm -hmm. Some of you guys may count uh, 90 uh, steps. You might say 180 because you're counting both feet. I don't like to count that high. Yeah. I like to keep, it, I like to keep it simple. So <laughs> you know, 85 to 95 is good. And it's gonna it's gonna vary a little bit. Now, if you're someone who starts with a higher cadence and you start to slow down, you know, a lot of times that is um, fatigue setting in, you've lost your posture. A lot of times we get tired, our shoulders stiffen up, guys. And when I can't swing my arms as freely, what happens is that my legs don't pick up quite so easily anymore. Yeah. They start to slow down. So one of the things you can work on is actually your cadence and check in. You know, just some awareness in the beginning is great. Like, 10 minutes into your run, like count for a minute, how are you doing, mm -hmm. right? Count again in half an hour, in an hour, and, and what really matters is what is going on, Alvip. And let's answer some questions off of uh, Facebook here. Um, Taney says from Facebook, you're just seeing my <laughs> time, bottom of my face, when should your last run be before a half marathon? I'm glad our videos have helped you. Um, hey, from Scotland, doing my first half marathon in Disneyland Paris next month. Oh, that's so exciting. Well, you're probably getting there, you know, pretty close. I would say for a half marathon, like maybe two weeks is probably, you know, pretty safe to do like your last long run, all long depending. Run, yeah. And then you're still going to run, but the, you're going to start to taper things down a little bit as you, as you go from there. We like to do like a sh small shakeout like the day before. Too, I feel like you do that too. Hundred percent. Just to yeah. like, especially if you were traveling to that place or whatever. Um, but there's some rest days built in and stuff. Last long run probably two weeks out. Yeah, yeah. and if I'm if I'm training for say a marathon and, and for my 50k, my biggest run will probably weeks four and weeks three. 
out. Yeah. And then yeah. two weeks out will still be pretty long, but it's not going to be as long as the previous ones, and I'll be stair stepping my way back down. Um, ooh, <laughs> any tips for improving mental strength during longer runs? I feel like your mental game is like on point. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like she's she's tough. I've, uh, I I come. We gonna do well. My dad has like the mental strength of like I don't even know, but um, I don't know. I go through phases. I kind of like I just accept what's happening. Like mm -hmm. it's easier to say that than to do it. But I kind of just I know that each section of the run is going to feel different. Mm -hmm. um, for me, like a lot of I love out and backs for the very fact that you got there and now you have to come back home. There's yeah. no real option there. That helps me a lot. When you do your long runs. Yeah. So you run out and then you're like, okay, I'm halfway. All yeah. I need to do is make yeah. it back. That is huge for me. Like that, that's how I started running long actually is like, well, what am I going to do? I'm stranded out here. <laughs> like yeah, I have right. to come back. You got to make it. Um, I don't know. I do. Do you like, listen to music? I listen to music. Yeah. Um, sometimes I'll turn it off just like see what's going on yeah. with my feet and stuff. We always say that, but I like think of different things. Like, you know, I, I just like being outside. Like for us, our views are pretty um, amazing. San Francisco, yeah, they're pretty yeah, good. Yeah, that's cool. What it, what happens like when you're going through any hard spots? Like, what are things you think about? And and we did longer, but you just climbed Mount Whitney yeah, a little while was, ago. Yeah. Can you tell the good people of the internet <laughs> how long you were out there on your feet for? Yeah. Um, it took us twenty two hours straight. Twenty two hours. How crazy is it that? It was at altitude, like the highest altitude in the country, basically. Oh my um, god! It was it was nuts. I at that point I had several stages where I was like, "Just get me off this mountain!" Like, it was, <laughs> and I didn't have music. It was just me and my thoughts. Oh um, man! I just always think about putting it into the bigger picture. Like when you're done with this, it's just going to be so awesome, and it's going to have put you that much further forward in your yeah. training and like in your in your mental strength. Like it's all part of the training. Yeah, it That's is. Crazy. It, it really is. You know, some of the things that I, I like to think about too is is just segmenting the runs. And, and early on, like right now, I'm still in a place where my runs, my long runs are too long, where I can still sort of enjoy it. But when I start to get really fatigued and beaten up, you know, I, I just have to think about my running in like 30 minute chunks. Exactly. And it's like if exactly. I can't go beyond that. And I try to focus on things that are process oriented that I can control. And a lot of my things I can control are running technique mm -hmm. related things. So yeah, my breathing, huge. my shoulders, you know, and, and just by focusing on those things, it's great. Um, the other thing that I found doing a lot of long endurance stuff, if my brain is starting to go to depressing places, oh, I need to check my fueling. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because yeah. maybe I'm hungry. Like um, yeah. we all know hangry, hungry and angry combined, uh, we can just get down on ourselves just because our low, our blood sugar has dropped. When's the last time you've eaten? Yeah. Have you have you had anything to drink lately? Are you overheated? Have you just gone too hard? So learning how to sort of monitor all your vitals, uh, I think is really helpful. Yeah, and don't things. be afraid to like pace pace down a little bit. So if you if you are feeling like not good, slow it down a little bit until you start to regain that control. Because like ultimately, when you feel like you're in control, you're feeling better about your long run. Mm -hmm. So Elizabeth asks, hey guys, Elizabeth from Mass, I have a question. I am on week six, day six of our half marathon program in our training club. Uh, some of you guys may not know this, but we actually have running programs. There's a link down below. You can go check it out and become a training club member and join Elizabeth and all your training. Um, and she says, in training for the Vermont Spartan Sprint, five miles, 26 miles on September 17th. How, when should I taper? So Elizabeth, what's interesting is if you have a half marathon after the Spartan and the Spartan is a stop along the way, the way I would treat the Spartan is just a hard workout. And you know, a short race doesn't necessarily lead as long a taper. So what I might do is take it easy the day or two prior to the race. Yeah. You know, if you've been consistent with your training, that's really good. Um, if you are you know, this was your big race and you really were really focusing on this, you know, I would move that taper up for a full week where I would be backing off some of the training. And guys, with the taper, we don't want to just sit on our butts the whole time. We actually want to keep some yeah. intensity in there, but just short focused bursts of usually a minute or less efforts with lots of rest in between. That's to get you recovering, but also keep you sharp and, and keep the wheels turning, turning well. So hopefully that's helpful. 
Elizabeth, you can obviously always uh, follow up with us on uh, help support and in our Facebook group. Let's see here. Um, going back to Tanya on Facebook, should I aim for under two hours in my first half marathon? My current pace is roughly 9.24 per mile for 12. You're not super far off. You're not. But yeah. this, this, if this is your first half marathon, I wouldn't go after it this way. Yeah, I wouldn't worry yeah. about time too much. I think that's good advice. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's great that you're pacing yourself. Um, don't expect that race day you're suddenly going to chop 10 seconds off your pace by yeah. time. Um, not that you can't, but like going from the beginning thinking you will, you're going to blow yourself up. <laughs> yeah, that's probably a good call. Uh, and, and Tanny, you know, we don't know what the rest of your training looks like. You know, are you doing uh, tempo runs and some speed runs? It's important to build that speed and that strength for, required for the half. Um, how hard are you pacing the halves? How consistently is the mm -hmm. training? So, so it sounds like you're you're not far apart from from breaking it two at some point. But if you have a race a month away, just enjoy it. Right? Yeah. Enjoy the race. Yeah. See what happens on race day. Start conservative. Make sure that feels good. And then you know if you do that well, it means that the final couple miles you really get to push hard. And, yeah, you can push it. Yeah, for sure. Um, let's see here. Joseph says, "I have my first marathon and." Quick, quick little break before we go back to our questions, because mm -hmm. we're, we're talking about long run, so ask your long run questions. Uh, we are doing a appropriately themed uh, hydration beverage giveaway by Scratch Labs. We got two packets right here. It is delicious and high performing at the same time. You can enter by hitting the Gleam link in the description. It'll it'll show you how to even get multiple entries, and we'll be doing the uh, giveaway in uh, not that long. Yeah, yeah, just towards the end of the hour. So, anyways, back to Joseph. You want to read this question? Sure. I have my first marathon in five weeks and can't seem to get over seventeen miles. My body starts to give out. Any tips on how to get over that? Mm. What do you think? I feel like I'm going to give a neat answer here, but um, feel free as long as you're getting your miles in to break it into two runs. We always say like running over three hours, you know, at whatever that that is for you over that isn't necessarily benefiting you. Yeah. So if you want to do part of it in the morning, say you only get to 17 or say maybe you want to do 15 and then put five on at the end of the day, you still got the miles in. Yeah. It's, it's just time on your feet. Um, obviously on, Marathon day, you're doing everything together, but training wise, I think that's a good a good route. The yeah, the double split up run can be really helpful uh, strategy to get some of that longer run, and then you're still getting used to running on those tired legs. You know, the other things that I would want to ask Joseph would be, how fast is the run itself? Yeah. You know, are, are we hitting these long runs too fast? Because purpose these long runs should be slow and easy like yeah. let yourself take some walking breaks totally. you know make There's sure like that. that you're warming up really well you know like how strong is that body of yours if you're breaking down maybe your body's telling you be like hey dude i'm just not strong enough yeah. to hit that distance yet you guys when i say strong enough i i mean strong enough to maintain good running for the whole time i got to be upright i have to have good posture and uh, I always like to give the uh, analogy of the airplane seat. You know, if you're mm -hmm. sitting for a long period day at work or you're doing this long flight, you know, you may start upright, but after a while you're going to be sort of hunched over. Mm -hmm. And this is what happens in our long runs. When I run in this hunched over position, see now I'm as tall as all like, there we go. And I'm standing on straight, so. There we go. <laughs> um, it just affects all of my mechanics mm -hmm. and uh, it's going to shorten my, my lifespan as a runner. So think about those things are important. Joseph, I'm not sure if you are following a plan or program, but uh, you should definitely check out not only some of our other videos, but we have a free two-week program mm -hmm. that you can get on that's really, really good. And uh, you can just go to our website, and there's a place to enter your email and get this like two weeks of some of our favorite run workouts and strength videos. It's stuff we talk about at the end of our, a lot of our YouTube videos too. And then we also have a training club where we actually have a program that could build you up for your uh, for your races, I know five weeks is uh, coming up, so yeah. we're not looking to Maybe make big changes. Yeah, but uh, definitely for the future. Yeah. 
Uh, let's see here. Awesome. Thank you. I will try double run. Cool. Uh, my pace is eight minute pace and my long runs are usually nine fifteen. So that's pretty good. Yeah. Um, you could even try a little slower in all honesty. And it it does help. Like just taking it back a little bit, like you'll be surprised how much more you can you can get out of the end. Totally. Um, Cassandra says, first, thanks for everything. Now, if I could put even a half of it into practice goals, I definitely hear you there. Um, yeah, uh, Running Guru says, yep, yeah, my vlog mentioned over three hours uh, is a waste of time, degrades muscle irrespective of speed. Yeah, you know, for, for running marathons, there's a school of thought that, you know, it doesn't matter what distance you've actually run. Uh, but if you are on your feet for over three hours, you're really not getting that much after a while. It's very, very true. And guys, <laughs> for, for those of you guys running like ultra runs, running 50 milers and 100 milers, you know, when people run 100 miles, the furthest they usually run a training is 60 oh, yeah. in one go, which is a 100K race. So they're going 40 miles into the unknown. If those yeah. guys can go 40 miles into the unknown, I think that, you know, we can go a couple miles into the unknown. Right. Let's see here. Tiana says, so much great knowledge today all the time, but today especially, and everyone's asking all the stuff I need to know. Awesome. Well, that is awesome. Uh, Romulo says, I think we have all our own ways to get through, but focusing on the things we can control is certainly the best advice. Nikki's talking about our talk about pacing and long runs and everything else. Um, GDK Mouse, I love all the names. I know. That's that great. Um, you want to read this one? Sure. If I want to do a 50 km uh, mile trail race, is there any point of doing long runs on the road or should I focus just on the trails only? Race specific training, thanks for your advice. Ooh, that's a good one. That is a good one. I think um, mixing up the terrain, like where you're going, helps your body out. So trails, we love just you're getting the hills in because they're pretty much always there, but yeah. some pavement runs thrown in is also good to just mix up how you're responding. We always say this with shoes, like you never want to get used to just whatever it is supporting you. Um, it's good to be responsive and like learn where your weight is, like is your strike foot strike changing? Yeah. Um, pavement is a little bit harsher on the joints sometimes, so it's good to be able to like have the strength to support yourself on that. Yeah, hundred so. percent. A lot of this is going to actually go with you know what you have access to, right? You know, I know that Lee, for example, is in Florida. And, you know, I don't know what her trail situation is. I think she just has a lot of alligators around her. Yeah. So she tends to love the trails <laughs> and will, you know, stay on, on the pavement. And so if she were to sign up for, say, a 50K trail race, um, she would have to not only embrace the alligators a little bit, um, but she would have to find a place usually to get some hills. Because yeah. a lot of times when you see these trail races, they're over nice. hill and dale. Yeah. And if you're a runner who's just used to, you know, flat, cruisy pavement like the trails are going to crush you yeah. unless you incorporate that in into your training in some way like holly says conversely if you are a trail runner and you, you do all your stuff on the soft surface and you're constantly mixing up your stride mm -hmm. and then you get ready for say 50k that's on the road you are also going to get crushed oh, yeah. because you just can't sustain the same that thing monotony over. that mm -hmm. same turnover the, the pounding of the pavement so, you know, going back to the specificity of what you're trying to do is good. And then you're getting ready for some high elevation stuff or whether yeah. it's hot, you know, getting some exposure there things, is, yeah. is huge for sure. Um, where's your, tell us where your, your 50K tray uh, race is. We should, uh, maybe we'll be at some of the same ones. Yeah. Um, uh, <laughs> Lee says, you're not reversing my position in the food mm -hmm. chain. She's going to stay away from those. Um, uh, alligators and yeah when you start getting to uh the trails you know it's it's more about time and less about miles yeah um uh andre says what do you think about maximum long runs for marathon preparations 35k 32 30k or even less that is a good question you know what have you what have you done i'm like what's like typically like when you've done marathons or other things like yeah. what are your longest runs I, do, I actually do somewhere around like 17 to 18, but granted, I'm like making sure a lot of hills are part of that. Yeah. Um, like we were just kind of saying, I think time is more important to think about just especially because maybe that's your first time doing 26.2 yeah. on that day. You're just, there's going to be elements there coming in where you're just, 
wow, I can't believe I'm still running at this point. Right. Um, so more of a time thing, but I would say my sweet spot is like 17 to 19. Probably. Yeah, so you yeah. don't go beyond. No. You know, the sometimes you see long runs of, you know, 17 to 18, which would be that 30 kilometers. And then, you know, I think 35K would be maybe closer to 21, yeah. 22, something like that. I think those are, are, are generally a pretty good range. One of the things to think about, guys, regardless of – your success in your long race is not going to be 100% contingent on that one long run. Right. It's actually about your entire week as a whole. And there's a lot of different ways to build up your, your mileage. And one of the better ways to do it, and this is actually something from the Hanson's Marathon Method. Um, I you know respect to those mm -hmm. guys. Because what they've done is, in certain respects, is that they've actually tried to de-emphasize the long run where some programs, especially for beginner runners, are having you run, you know, almost upwards of the full marathon distance right. in training, right. and saying, "Hey, let's not do that, but let's redistribute that mile throughout the whole week." Okay. So it's a little safer for you and your body. Uh, the training is not easy; it's so hard. Yeah. But you build up that resiliency of those miles in a more distributed fashion. Um, the two other big things that are going to be big is. Um, Tempo work mm -hmm. and speed work and tempo work, guys, is going to be running, say, at half marathon pace or faster. Right. And then uh, the other one is going to be uh, strength. Yeah. You know, strength training can really make a difference in your ability to handle that pounding and that impact. Because the biggest thing with running, it's actually when we hit the ground and there's and there's a, a controlled lengthening of the muscle. And that controlled lengthening of the muscle is called an eccentric contraction. A lot of marathons and actually trails, what beats you up more, you might be breathing hard on the uphill, but what really beats your body up and makes you go slow is the downhill. So if having a, a strategy to handle those downhills is, is big. Definitely. So let's see here. Um, Running Guru says, I love working in Switzerland mountains. Um, you know, I actually lived in Switzerland for a little while in college, and I got to explore the trails in the mountains my first time. I thought that was so cool. Um, uh, Strepo Game says, we're in the Netherlands, don't have hills. Uh, GD Kmas, somewhere in the UK. That's cool. So you guys will have some, some curvy stuff there for sure. Uh, so, Andre, hopefully that helped you out. Let's go through for questions. Guys, we're here taking your questions, talking about long runs. Uh, anything you guys need to know, and, and we can go outside of long runs too if you've got other burning questions. I feel like we had some ones that we missed over oh, yeah. further up. Let's see here. Just Crow says, best running advice I've gotten lately, engage your glutes for sure. Making sure those hips are turned on and engaged is big. Uh, Lee says, you practice your mental game, and like Holly says, don't obsess about it. A lot of it comes down to how you speak to yourself in your mind on your regular training runs. Uh, Running Guru says, try meditation. I'm going backwards here. Um, meditation is helpful for sure. Romulo says, I like long runs better, but I'm dropping the hammer in a 10K race awesome. this weekend. The short races <laughs> are always fun yeah. for sure. Um, Jedi says, can we be – afraid of running for a long time if i want to run more miles what about the heart and its resistance isn't it dangerous if i run too much hmm. i think um training for any long run or beginning to start beginning running long uh comes down to gradually progressing like your heart probably will be in danger if you just head out and try to knock out 15 miles out of coming from like five um yeah. But the body adapts, and like we said, when you're mixing up your training, you're doing the strength and mobility and everything, and mixing up the speeds of your runs and everything. I mean, you're you're physically preparing yourself for those long runs constantly. You know, I think, you know, to, to answer very technical questions about, you know, your heart is probably a little bit beyond uh, Holly and I's pay grade. <laughs> um, but the one thing I will say, and this is important for all of you guys who are endurance nuts you know, and, and really focused on marathon and ultra and everything else, you know, there's a moment where by increasing running and our fitness, we improve our health, 
but there's a moment that as athletes that we push ourselves so much and so far that we actually start to go away from health. Okay. And we're doing things to get ready for a 100-mile run, you know, running a couple miles a week, totally. probably pretty healthy, balanced with a lot of other things. If I am running so far that I'm so beat up and beaten down and exhausted all the time, that's not something I can sustain uh, yeah. for my life. Um, I don't think our human bodies were wired to pound the snot of ourselves for 42 kilometers yeah. or 26.2 miles on the pavement, yeah. right? So we do these things because they're hard and they bring us some level of challenge and fulfillment. Um, borderline, would I say, are they healthy, right? Yeah. The 5K, 10K athlete is probably a lot more rounded and, and oh, healthy yeah. than, than the extreme stuff. So. It's, and you go through phases like we both have gone through. You know, when we yeah. realize we're just training way too hard or, yeah. or way too much, and your your body will tell you you're not feeling awake ever. You know, that's <laughs> like <laughs> that's a good sign that you're probably ever doing it. Um, but just kind of ebb and flows and, until you find a rhythm there. Totally. Um, Andre says hello from Brazil. Uh, it looks like Running Guru is going to bed. Good night. <laughs> good night. Glad you were <laughs> tuned in for a little bit. Uh, Elizabeth says. I did the Hanson Marathon method two years ago, longest run 16 miles, but I didn't have any time for strength training and IT band issue arose, although I believe in spreading the miles throughout um, the week, but needed more strength added in, love your programs, Nate. Um, well, thanks, Elizabeth. You know, it is interesting that there are certain aspects of the Hanson method that I really like in terms of the distribution, but you are running so much and they actually don't always fit in a lot of other stuff. So for us, we try to distribute some of the mileage, but then we also have you focus on that strength training and, and everything else, which totally. is which is so big. Let's see here. Uh, Lee says, your resting heart rate can tell you a lot. I can tell if I'm fatigued when I wake up in the morning and my pulse is faster than usual. Uh, our bodies give us a lot of feedback. It's definitely true. And there's also, Lee, I don't know if you use any of those devices that track your heart. Oh, yeah. seen that stuff? I've seen it, yeah, I haven't, I haven't used um, it. If you want to get all fancy and tech, yeah. you can you know, <laughs> do that stuff. Uh, endurance nuts sounds better than cardio freaks, yeah, sure. definitely, for sure. Um, guys, remember, we are giving away Scratch Labs. If you want to enter, we already have almost a 1,000 entries in there, I just checked, but hit that Gleam link down below if you're just um, tuning in. We are uh, giving away some lovely Scratch Labs product right here, Shazam, there we go. And it uh, is something we're gonna do at the end of the hour. So hit that link, there's different ways to enter and you can get multiple entries and increase your chances for a successful victory. Uh, Tony says, hey from Virginia, good job guys. What part of Virginia? That's where I'm from. <laughs> totally. Um, let's see here, Kathleen says, hey, I had really sore feet after the 14K race I did last month. I have picked up a pair of Hocus for 10K oh. race this weekend. I know I've left this late, but any tips on foot care? I, I'm i the biggest mm. Hoka fan in the world. Are you? Uh, yeah. I I know that they have their place in training, but if your feet were sore coming from wherever you were, like, your life's going to change. The Hocus are going to take care of a lot of the pain. I mean, you're, you're going to want to focus yeah. on still your form and stuff, but like – Taking that initial impact out, yeah, mm. it's gonna be awesome. That's cool. They definitely uh, are an important tool to uh, enable us. And if those of you guys aren't familiar with with Hoka shoes or other shoes in that category, they're shoes where they've increased the what they call stack height of of the bottom of the shoe. And what it what it's done is is sort of dis redistribute the impact and take a lot of the stress. And pounding from your feet so a lot of people like it because it's it's helpful there um, the other things I would work on in terms of Kathleen is not just the shoes as a way of solving issues because if that's all I did in reality I'm just kicking the can down the road so to speak um, make sure you're you're rolling your calves a lot mm -hmm. you're rolling out your feet a lot you're strengthening your feet and your ankles with some really important what we call accessory work uh, we put out a video not super long ago on how to strengthen your feet and your oh, yeah. ankles for those types of things. Yeah. Paying attention to your run technique. Are you someone who's running up on your toes a lot? Are your ankles not really relaxed? Like what's going on? Anytime you're dealing with some kind of pain, guys, it is giving you some 
uh, feedback, and it's up to us to figure out how to do that stuff. Now, you know, for us and the things that we do at the Run Experience, um, and I know a bunch of you guys on here are our training club members, meaning you are coached by us and you're in one of our programs, we can't promise 100% that we will, you know, fix you, but what we're trying to do is give you a framework and the resources and the tools to solve these problems, right, yourself, other than just rest or like <laughs> run till your, your foot or knee, you know, explodes, so to speak, you have to take two weeks off, you have to go see a physical therapist and a doctor, and then you just kind of ping pong your way back and forth in a very stressful way. We try to show you how to catch that stuff early. Um, so, so make sure you check us out, guys. We get some pretty, pretty killer programs, but I don't mind my so mm -hmm. saying. We work hard on them. Holly here works hard on them. Good deal. I just talk about them. <laughs> um, yeah, Hoka Clifton three are the best. Um, uh, would strength training be focused just in the legs, as you're always using them all the time? Or is upper body strength just as important? You guys asked some good I questions know, it's very today. Technical I like this. Today. Um, we like strength training everything. There's so much that goes into running. Like it's if you just look at it as like your legs doing work for you and nothing else, you're gonna break down pretty yeah. fast. Where we like to focus a lot on core um, that helps you stay upright. Uh, upper body strength and, and arms and stuff is just nice to to broaden you know the the shoulder strength and keep you. Um, regular on your arm swing yeah. and keep your head up and have your neck supported and everything. So really top to bottom, it all yeah, matters. It's, it really all matters. You know, your your upper body and, and arm swing is is big because it does affect everything else down below. Uh, in terms of strength, a lot of times people will, will say, it's like, well, I run a lot, so my legs are strong. So I'm not necessarily going to do leg strength stuff. I'll just do core and other work. The, the issue is that when I'm running, I'm going at – for what my body can actually handle, submaximal loads and very shortened ranges of motion in terms of how much my hip flexes and my knee flexes, et cetera. So something like a squat, for example, is going to really teach you um, how to go through full range of motion, uh, putting your hips, knees, and ankles into full flexion, and then developing the stability and control around that. So there's something about doing full range of motion movements loaded up that gives us not only the strength but also like that that skill that yeah. ability yeah. to be strong and stable and, and the way I like to think about it guys is it it gives me uh, it gives us a buffer uh, for for dealing with any you yeah. know potential issues further on down something the road. to go back to like when you are tired and something's breaking down in your legs pushing the hips forward engaging the glutes like something else you can pull from is always a good Always a good one. Totally. Oh, Hampton, Virginia. Hampton. I'm from Leesburg. I think oh. northern, north from there. There we go. Awesome. Uh, we got a question from Facebook here. Hello, you guys, <laughs> Facebook guys over here. Uh, Ian says, hey, I'm coming to the end of a marathon training plan, and I just completed my last long run, 23 miles. It's two and a half a weeks till uh, event day. First marathon. Training has been varied. Trying to see, yeah. and gone are. I feel like we've lost your the comment. We've lost the rest of it. Ian, if you want to finish the rest of that or, or follow up with a question, we can't see the the rest of your thing, unfortunately. Let me see if I. No, no. no that doesn't work. <laughs> well, guys, Craig's not here, so this is <laughs> the exhausting <laughs> of my my technical ability. You guys can kind of fill in as we go here. Um, man, almost fifteen minutes to do your giveaway. Our Scratch Labs giveaway, Tiana says, does it taste as great as the packaging looks? Um, it definitely does. It's used with real fruit. It's not overly sweet. Yeah, it's not um, too sweet at all. It works yeah. for long runs. I put it in my kale back a lot when I'm, I'm going out for long runs. I'm going to use it tomorrow and the next day in these 90 plus degree yeah. hot days. So it's going to be gnarly. Um, Let's see. Uh, oh, Steve says, hey, what's up, Steven? Steven from, uh, from TRE. I'm on week three of the TRE marathon program. The long uh, run is a run walk, 50-10, uh, and at slow talking pace. Should I be aiming to run my marathon like that? So, Steven, that's a really good question. Um, 
I threw in a walk run of, of 50 seconds, 10 seconds as a way to, you know, build a little focus in there and, and also to, to purposely build some walking breaks in. And those walking breaks is going to minimize uh, your sense of feeling too beat up. It's also going to give you a chance to reclaim your posture. But that doesn't mean you have to 100% stick yeah. to the 50-10. Uh, one of our favorite philosophies, Stephen, and this is can at first feel a little aggravating, but uh, it's true, is that we are going to give you a training plan, but also tell you strategically not to follow it yeah. at certain <laughs> times, right, based on what you need. So we could change some of that walk break up and we could extend it to two minutes long, three minutes long, five minutes long with, with short breaks. Or if you're feeling good and you want to experiment, Stephen, we can actually take some of those walking breaks out altogether. You're also like you're on week three. Yeah, week yeah. three of it. So we you'll see like we take you further away from this this method, but it's always a good technique if you are mid race to go back to like not being afraid to reset with a walk break. Yeah. So it's kind of the strategy more than how you're supposed to do it every single time. Totally. And, and it's something to, to kind of tinker with those long runs. But if you're a new runner, uh, you know, playing with those walk breaks in there is, is, is helpful for sure. Okay. Um, oh, so Ian wrote the rest of his comment. Sorry, it was a long comment. My left ankle has been tight recently, and a few hours after my last long run, I could not put weight on my left foot. I gotcha. So, you know, with anything, if we're dealing with acute, um, <laughs> that's funny. Uh, so, anytime we're dealing with any type of acute physical pain uh, and you're really limping, um, guys, we are not doctors. We don't play yeah. them on the internet. Yeah. Um, you know, go get it checked out by someone to make sure you'll have a physical therapist, check it out. Um, you could book an appointment with Dr. Kyle Bowling and do an online injury, um, Video one -on -one. assessment, yeah. uh, with, with, with Kyle, who's kind of our resident, uh, you know, run sports specific mm -hmm. chiropractor and he could, you know, give you that sort of assessment. If it's something that is on the level of you know lower level aches and pains we think you could manage well we need to be working on those calves working on those shins rolling out your feet um checking in on your run technique making sure that those feet and those ankles are strong yeah. so notice guys i'm always going back to hey how are your mechanics the chain of events exactly yeah. right how are my mechanics do i am i missing any range of motion can right. i get that range of motion back right. am i missing strength and stability can i get that back too um, I feel like we had another follow-up here. Um, Steven says, it makes uh, the run real easy. I get back fine, but in trying to keep my cadence up, there's lots of little strides which make my knees stiff. Can I add in pulls? So the little heel pulls is a way to exaggerate your cadence and, and pick those feet up. Um, the knee stiffness is also just going to be adaption from running, Steven. So make sure you're hitting things like couch stretch, you're right. smashing out your quads with a foam roller. Like counteracting all these things that we do, there's always like a mobility thing on the other end of it to make sure it's not piling up on yeah. top of itself. Yeah, 100%. And that's, that's that thing of, you know, making sure that you are getting all the work done you need to get done. What's up, John? John <laughs> just joined. He's, he's an OG, TRE. <laughs> um, all right, we'll go back to YouTube for a second. Um, Troy asks, hey, speaking of hokas, what would you recommend for someone who wears a neutral shoe? I wear Asics Gel Nimbus 15s now, but I feel like I'm taking uh, an impact on the bottom of my feet recommendations. So Troy, one of the things I would look at is runningwarehouse.com um, and we do have a partnership with them. The one thing that I really like about them, have you seen their yeah, website? Yeah, it's awesome. Is they have this shoe finder tool and they do a really good job in terms of categorizing the shoes by how much cushioning and how much support and the type of runs you're trying to look for. And they will pretty well tell you the type of hokas that would be, that would work really well for you. I'm medium familiar with the models. I'm yeah. thinking probably like the Clifton. Yeah. Clifton's not bad. I just got a pair of the the ATR challengers. I think they're called challenger threes. 
they're actually pretty neutral, like compared yeah. to any hokas I've had before. I use them on the trails and I can actually still feel the ground. So, yeah. but they definitely, there's so many models now. And the thing about hokas, they're always coming out with like, there's like five versions of every shoe. Yeah, now. there are now. Um, so it'd be interesting to look through that shoe finder for sure. That's cool. Yeah, Troy, definitely check that out and see. And obviously, if you can get into a run specialty store and get a pair of shoes on, definitely do that. We actually just did a video with Running Warehouse on how to find the perfect pair of shoes. And we talk about the different elements of the shoe and how to think about it in terms of like the type of runs you're going after and the type of runner you are. Uh, we put that out a couple weeks ago. You can find that on our channel. Uh, Tony says, definitely since I work my core more, I feel much better when I run and when I run for a longer time. I think it's getting back to our strength conversation. Joseph says, when are you guys hosting a running clinic in the Orange County area? Hey, Joseph, whenever you invite us down yeah. to do one. We'll, <laughs> well, we're happy to get down there. Totally. I'm actually hosting one with the Pacifica Runners Club. Oh, cool. Yeah. In a week and a half. Yeah, oh, awesome. yeah, yeah. Next week awesome. on Sunday. So if you're... Down in Pacifica, California, and you want to hang out for I'll a couple hours in the track <laughs> on Sunday, I will be there. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Jasmine says, should I use different shoes when doing my long run? Um, sorry about my <laughs> font being in all caps. Um, so within the long run itself, maybe not necessarily, and that's probably just a logistics standpoint. Yeah. Um, do you wear different shoes throughout the week? Do you like to wear the I, I do. Ones? No, I switch. I switch it up. Um, that's a good way to just save your shoes anyway. And also, like we always say, like yeah. make sure your feet are responding to your runs, not not the shoes. Um, I switch back and forth, maybe between like two pairs. Like if yeah. I'm going, if I'm gonna go do a, a fast like track workout, that'll be something different than the longer. If I'm on the trails too, a longer trail run. Yeah, so. and and Jasmine, I love the YouTube name. <laughs> Uh, we talk about that in, you know, that how to find a uh, perfect pair of shoes video that says, you know, what type of shoe would you want for some of your long runs, regular training runs? What would you want for tempo work? What would you want for the trails? Yeah. And, you know, check out Running Warehouse because they got some great, great stuff there and tell them we sent you. That's <laughs> always helpful. Uh, let's see here. Uh, let's go to Facebook for a quick second. Guys, we are going to do in less than 10 minutes our giveaway for Scratch Labs. This delicious, nutritious hydration beverage could be yours. All you need to do is click that Glean link in the description and you'll be able to not only get one entry, there's a way to get multiple entries. So make sure you do that and uh, go in there. We're going to be doing this drawing in less than 10 minutes. If you're just signing on, that is what is going down. Uh, John Backlar, another TRE member, says, quick question, I've run several marathons and have gotten cramps in all of them except in my first one. During training, I didn't have any problems. I don't think it's a hydration problem. Hmm. So at one level, John, we'd want to know where the cramps are occurring. Uh, if it's always occurring in the same place, because the thing that I like to think about is, you know, what's happening mechanically that could potentially be causing that. I've certainly been in races where I've noticed that certain parts of my quads or calves were, were cramping because I was really pushing myself on the limit, but I could make some mechanical adjustments and, and, yeah. and remove that away and focus on my breathing. So the worst thing that happens we start to cramp up is – we, we tend to get more tense, we freak out a little bit, and then we double down on the very same thing that made us cramp in the first place. Right. The other um, thing, so you said it probably wasn't a hydration problem, but electrolytes, like exactly what Scratch is, um, replacing those, if you're, if you're in a long run, you're in a marathon or something, that takes a huge you know, chunk yeah. out of you. So I actually carry a little um, tube of salt that I do like maybe every hour and a half or every hour, like a couple shakes of that. Um, and that kind of gets the system going too, but also just you're, you're losing electrolytes in your body and yeah. so to replace those is super important to not cramp. It is. So that's, that can, that can be, uh, you know, certainly helpful. And John, the other thing too would be, you know, partly, uh, when we are really running at our limit for long periods of time, you know, our body's going to get a little twitchy 
And in our training, we can ask how well we've prepared ourselves to, to run at that limit for that period. Yeah. So for you, it might be a situation where it's like, we need to do more race-paced efforts in your training, yeah. right? We need to do long runs at those longer, harder efforts at the end, right? Maybe we need to be throwing some more races in there uh, as like part of your runs. preparation for your race. Yeah. And if you're going to be for a marathon, maybe we really push it on a, a half marathon or two. And the other thing is, you know, how how loose and and relaxed were those quads and calves going start, in, right? Yeah. Because if they are already on tender hooks, uh, that doesn't necessarily totally. help us. So it's it's tricky, John. We can't necessarily say one answer to unpack this thing, but that's how I would approach it from from that position there. Uh, let's see here. Um, ja Jasmine says, "How do I prevent runner's knee?" Dude, we have multiple runner's oh, yeah. knee videos. We have tons of knee. They're titled that. Uh, so they're titled that. Right we there. go through demos of movements. We talk about different strength exercises you need to do. We show you how we show you the, the tight muscles that affect the knee. So literally just go on our channel and, and search runner's knee. And you're gonna pull up a few different videos that will be really helpful there. Uh, we'll get one or two more questions in, guys, before we do the drawing. Once again, hit that gleam link down below. That is a way to enter. We'll see how many entries we have for our scratch giveaway. Da, 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 da. Wow. Perfect. Three minutes left, guys, That's to awesome. do this. So we're doing pretty good here. Um, we had a question on VO2 max from William Ward. Why should we pay attention to VO2 max? My Garmin just recorded a new running VO2. What the heck does this mean? <laughs> so... Have you ever had your VO2 max measured? I don't think I have, but I've read a lot about it. I've been interested. Yeah. Yeah. So, guys, without going too deep in the weeds here, you know, VO2 max is a, a measurement used at your, your body's ability to intake oxygen and, and get them into your um, red blood cells. And, and the, the bigger that number is, especially related to your body weight, um, that's usually a sign that you quote unquote have a bigger engine than uh, other athletes. Mm -hmm. So it's been used as a gold standard measuring the potential of endurance athletes from cross country skiers to rowers to soccer players to, to runners and, and to cyclists. And it's, it's also incomplete. So someone could get their VO2 max taken, which would be usually this test that takes, you know, it's a progressively, it's a test you take to failure. Mm -hmm. And usually there's a little stair step test where you start at a low intensity for two minutes and then at one to two minute increases, you just basically keep ratcheting up the effort until you can't go anymore. And you're trying to elicit this, what feels like a maximum heart rate max effort sort yeah. of feeling. I think in terms of the time frame that we can hold that VO2 max effort for, it's literally like four to six minutes. Yeah. That's about as much yeah. as we can do train. So guys, this is like a miler. That's mm -hmm. what they really care about. For the marathoner or longer period, the we're always going to be living in the sub VO2 max world. But the idea is that if I can improve the ceiling of my VO2 max, I also improve my sub maximal efforts as well. So a lot of tools now are trying to use different algorithms to determine what your VO2 max is. It's sort of like the calorie counting yeah, yeah. in your, your, your Garmin. Are you going to base your nutrition plan around that? It's like, mm, probably not. It's, it's like another stat like that we care about and it matters, but it's yeah. Like, like Nate said, just making your training around one thing. There's so many other factors that go into it. Totally. Um, uh, Lee, haha, ha, Lynn Garmin has my mind totally wrong. <laughs> Um, let's see here. Ali also says magnesium supplements in the weeks running up to the race for sure. Um, Garland says, guys, one more minute. We're going to do our giveaway. Uh, Garland, previous winner, oh, yeah. theory giveaway yeah. winner. Uh, for post-run stretches, should the length of time vary on the stretch if doing a short run versus doing a long 17-mile run? We like to say like allotting a period of time for your stretching and mobility. So 
maybe you're not holding the stretches for like if it's a static stretch, you're not holding it for different periods of time based on whatever you did. Yeah. Um, but like something like a couch stretch that we really love, like after if you just did a 17 mile run, like by all means hang out there for a couple minutes per side. And um, a lot of times you just bring that heart rate down anyway. So yeah. And you know, in terms of stretching to accomplish a certain goal, whether it's to get some sort of muscle to relax and release, you know, guys, it's it's done when it's done. Yeah. You know, we can't just say, you know, do this for one minute and you've checked that box and you're all good. And this this relates more to some of your self massage mobility work. Some of you guys who are stiffer are going to need to spend more time in those body parts to to get them on stiff. Right. For those of you guys who are healthy and you feel good, it's like you know what? Maybe it only takes a few minutes just to maintain, yeah, yeah. and then you're good to go. Yeah. But I know that if you are really trying to make progress say on improving your hip extension and your hips are really tight, well then you need to spend more time in that couch stretch for sure. That's really good. Um, Joseph says, your videos have helped me so much. Awesome, Joseph. Uh. <laughs> High five. Thank you so much for the time and dedication you both of you guys put in. Um, Jamie says, I need to work on my breathing. VO2 max, ugh. That's probably a good way to end yeah. this. <laughs> we agree. <laughs> you guys are so awesome. John says, thanks, loving the tier group. John, we love you too, man. We'll, we'll keep working on uh, that uh, cramp issue and, and see what we can uh, figure out and, and provide there. And uh, now, guys, we're going to end the uh, giveaway, and we will all of a sudden draw our people. Let's see here. Pulling up the Glean tab so that we can do our competition. Pull this guy up. Da, 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 da. All right, we are gonna be drawing our winners. So we got two winners here. Let's see here. Two. Da, 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 da. Um, let's see here. I am going to get this fixed here, guys. We're still working on this. Yeah, that's good. Let's see. Sorry, guys. It's taking a moment. There we go. No. <laughs> da, 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 da. Hold on, guys. Bear with us. Bear with us. Very technical here. All right. Nice work. So our winners, guys, we are going to announce. Uh, sure. Okay. Uh, we have Ann Pressig. Let's see here. You are our winner. And we have uh amelia k uh, she is also our other winner for the scratch labs that's right amelia yeah. nice job you just, um, you just won winner winner chicken digger mm -hmm. and uh the other winner as i said da, 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 is ann and p pressing. and pressing so we have your emails so we are going to reach out to you guys with your information and our way to send this stuff out to you guys everyone else thank you for tuning in and listening and for all your questions we love it um keep sticking around and hopefully we'll get you guys on that list yeah. as well uh guys definitely check out scratch labs they got some great stuff um if you guys haven't downloaded our app you haven't checked out our training plans guys do that next we've got some really great stuff for you if you think our videos on YouTube are good. We're really just scratching the surface in terms of what you guys can do with your running, which is why we're here. Craig and I will be back <laughs> next Thursday for our live show. We will see you guys there. And yes, Gianna, we had some great questions today. All right, guys, we're out. Peace. See you later. Happy Labor Day for those oh, yeah, guys in the US. Day. See you later. Boom.